For fuck's sake, I'm not reading this shit. Okay, okay, put the fucking gun down. In recent weeks, unsettling rumors have spread across the Imperium regarding an alleged catastrophic event known as the Great Bleed. These claims have caused widespread panic and confusion with unverified reports describing worlds being swallowed by a tide of darkness and chaos. However, Imperial authorities firmly deny the existence of such an event, urging citizens to remain calm and trust in the Emperor's protection. Terminus 93, the last evacuation point. Waves of warp energy crashed against Hive World, consuming it in chaos. Within the coiled tendrils of warp energy, demons, heretics, and traitors materialized, spreading destruction. The loyalists did not stand a chance. Time is running out for the broken remnants, who must secure Terminus 93 to live to fight again. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to play part one of the Battle Lord campaign called Hive World. If that's not to your liking, then thank you for tuning in. But it's now time for you to book your one way ticket to the death world of Katachan, where everything on the planet will try to kill you. Before I say let's move the narrative on, please do like and subscribe to our channel. I'm told by several Mechanicus cottagers that this will help grow the channel so more of you get to watch our free content. So let's move the battle law report on through a split narrative told between the mission rules, armies and deployment. For the forces of chaos to win, they must maintain a presence in the terminus or otherwise prevent the Imperial agents from escaping. To secure victory, units within the terminus must not be battle shocked. To represent the lack of cohesion between the victorious servants of chaos, currently enjoying the hedonistic pleasures from their patron god Slanesh, they will deploy randomly. In the first turn, the forces of chaos will be surprised by the assault. All movement, including advancing, hit and charge rolls, will be at a minus one penalty if they fail a battle shock test in the command phase. Because the Hive world has been consumed by the Great Bleed, the Shadow of Chaos is in effect across the entire board, giving plus one to battle shock rolls to all units. The forces of Chaos, occupying Terminus 9-3, consist of the victorious Cohorse Nesake, an Emperor's Children warband and their facile cultists and demons. Dark Apostle Anderoth, Warlord of the Chaos Cult leads a unit of accursed cultists in pious celebrations. As a symbol of his office, he wears the Amulet of Tainted Vigor. He will be able to return D3 accursed cultists in the command phase. Narratively, it did not make sense for Lucius the Eternal to be my warlord today, as he is elsewhere, searching for clues regarding the whereabouts of his Primarch. He will feature later on in the campaign to appease any rules lawyers we have with us today. With their transformation complete, the Felgor Ravagers as Bestial Raiders will enter the battle from reserve in turn 1. This represents the Beastman's pursuit of the surviving Adeptus Arbites, who resisted Slarnesh's temptations. There are in total 7 damn units who will have access to the detachment rule of adding 2 inches to movement and charge rolls if they make a desperate pact by passing a leadership test. The cult is supported by 2 units of noise marines and a squad of legionnaires. The legionnaires are led by an aspiring chaos lord, Revelian Thrice Burned. He carries an accursed melter gun and power fist. And finally, in the immaterium, which has engulfed Hive World, there are two units of Demonettes and a Keeper of Secrets ready to enter the Terminus via Deep Strike. 
let's get them deployed. It's one of the joys of rolling dice when they present you with a possible narrative. Perhaps Terminus 9-3 is deliberately empty as the Dark Apostle Andoroth awaits the triumphant arrival of Chaos Cultists across Hivewell to his pleasure church, or the humiliating arrival of the defeated populace who must dedicate themselves to the pleasure god Slanesh. All roads to Chaos Piety lead to Terminus 9-3. The primary mission for the Imperial Agents is straightforward. To win, they must secure Terminus 9-3 to escape the Hive. This means Terminus 9-3 must be clear of all enemy forces. Inquisitor Erasmus has carefully devised staging points for his forces to deploy from. If a unit arrives from reserve, it must do so from these points. The Imperial agents have access to core stratagems only. At the time of writing this battle report, I had no knowledge of the new codex. However, I will use the acquire at all costs detachment rule whereby units will receive plus one to hit if the Imperial agents control the terminus. Objective control will be used to determine control of the terminus in each command phase. To die for the Emperor is to fight for him again. Here is my pre-codex Imperial agents detachment consisting of the following forces. Inquisitor Erasmus leads his retinue with two mystics for deep strike denial and two gun servitors for added firepower. The rest of the unit are wielding their kill team weapons and I will resolve their attacks using the weapons they are carrying. Inquisitor Erasmus will be protected by a squad of Karsakin. These units will deploy from the train. There are three surviving units of Adeptus Arbites who did not succumb to the Great Bleed and transformed into Felgor Ravagers due to their dark deeds as law enforcers. The three units will start the battle in their trusted Chimera troop transports. They will deploy on the roads into Terminus 9-3 with a unit of Battle Sisters who Inquisitor Erasmus placed under his jurisdiction. From the landing pad, unable to escape the planet, a reluctant rogue trader leads a unit of Voidsmen at arms. They are supported by a unit of Imperial Breachers. They will provide a turn one distraction for the traitor Astartes to deal with. Death is a fitting punishment for desertion. And finally, Erasmus has activated an Eversaur Assassin from Stasis to infiltrate the Terminus and eliminate the Dark Apostle Andoroth.
The X-Action Squad are going to use their Imperial Law rule to target the accursed cultists, giving them a plus one to hit. Of course, they're going to have to disembark from their Chimera. The Subductor Squad are going to do the same and they will disembark ready to charge any of the accursed cultists that are left. Now, as we enter the movement phase, Inquisitor Erasmus has ordered all units to enter the Terminus. As a reminder to you, the Terminus is one objective that has to be controlled by the end of the game. You'll also notice that the transports do not have lots of space to manoeuvre across the board. As buildings have been destroyed by the Great League, they've been replaced by a primordial forest. The Subdactors advance into the Terminus has been limited by the positioning of the accursed cultists which you can see on the overhead shot now. The X-Action Squad have disembarked two and moved six into position to provide some supporting fire and hopefully clear the front three mutated cultists. Just from a different perspective, you can see how well the accursed cultists have done in blocking the Subductor Squad getting any closer than it did to the Dark Apostle. Narratively, I would imagine the Dark Apostle is rather shocked by this organized attack. And there he is, the Eversaw, ready to strike. The Combat Squad of Battle Sisters have entered the Terminus and will play no more part in this turn of the battle. The Vigilant Squad have disembarked from their Chimera and are ready to unleash their combat shotguns into the cultists here, the reprogrammed Arco Vigilants and their Chimera, because of the tree here, had to move to draw a line of sight so that it can use its multi-laser and flamer. You will notice that the Vigilant Squad have a unit of Battle Sisters carrying two flamers, a heavy flamer and a standard Minostorum flamer, which will attempt to ameliorate, burn these cultists. The Voidsman at Arms 
and breeches have moved closer to the terminus. They are very much in a perilous position due to the Legionnaires and a unit of noise marines who will no doubt rain sonic energy on top of their heads. The noise marines positioned on the landing pad are going to fire overwatch at the Boyd's men at arms, needing six. So we get two, fantastic, above average. We now need twos to wound. Two wounds, these are AP minus one, cause one damage each, be enough to kill two voidsmen. Both voidsmen die. Not a great advertisement for the channel's new dice, which are gonna go on sale soon. Hopefully they'll perform better later. Let's move on. The two have died so far, there's only three left. We then have three Sonic Blasters getting three shots each. We need six shots. Okay, we've got two more. These are strength five against toughness three, so we need three. One more wound, there's no AP on this, four up. Crikey, I'm an orc, four up. As you can see, the Inquisitor and his retinue have disembarked. They are now closer to the Terminus, but in moving, they have limited their line of sight at the Noise Marines in an attempt to block the Dark Commune, the Karsakin have disembarked in the same way they would from a vehicle from the train to try and destroy some of their number and block a potential charge at the Inquisitor. The Karsakin carrying a hot shot marksman rifle is going to use precision to try and wound the cult demagogue who gives the unit a five up invulnerable save. So let's start there. We need a three to hit. We're now moving on to the flamer, gets D6 shots, so three shots. We're going to need freeze to wound. We wound three times. Five up invulnerable. Three of the dark commune are dead. We then have the grenade launcher and we're going to use a frag grenade. So D3. So we get one shot, needing a three to wound. And we wound, there's no AP on this, doesn't matter anyway, because the invulnerable's better. And saves. We then have a plasma gun. We're not gonna supercharge, but we are in rapid fire range. So we need freeze. We hit twice. We need now twos. We do not wound. Crikey. Clearly, the great bleed is affecting the concentration of these elite guardsmen. Ugh. Plasma pistol from the sergeant. Hits. Wounds on a two. Wounds. Five up invulnerable. Nearly a six. So the cult demagogue is left. The multi laser from the Chimera at the cultist mob. Get four shots with it. We need fours. So we've hit three times. We now need twos. Oh my goodness me. The Great Bleed is clearly affecting the ability of the Imperial agents to do any significant damage. Three ones, crikey. 
We now have a flamer. Don't get a one. Oh, that's better. A heavy flamer, sorry. Let's be a bit more precise. We now have shot five against toughness three. Three threes. That's better. This is AP minus one, so we kill four of the cultist mob. There are six left. We have the Lasgun array next with 12 shots because it's in rapid fire range. We need fours to hit. We have hit 10 times, no, 11 times. 10 times, crikey. Can't count. Clearly the great bleed is affecting my abilities too. My apologies. We now need fours to wound. Oh my goodness me. Again, no wounds. It's as if they're not there. Is the great bleed creating illusions causing the the gunners in the tank to fire at shadows i'm hoping the divinity of the battle sisters will enable them to have a clear shot at these cultists elusive cultists so heavy flamer d6 five shots fantastic start these are strength six so we need twos. We wound three times. These are AP minus one, killing three more. There are three left. We have a Ministorm Flamer, D6. Four shots. These are strength five, so we need threes. We wound three times. There are no AP on these, so we... Get our sixth save. Three more are dead. The emulator has moved into position to eradicate these cultists. So the emulator at the second mob of cultists has a heavy bolter. Let's fire that first. We need threes to hit. We do sustained hits on sixes, so we've got five shots. This is good going. We now need threes to wound. Oh my goodness me, seeing shadows again. So only two wounds. They're there, but they're not there. Crikey. They kill two cultists because the AP is greater than their six up save. We then have a emulator for 2d6 we get four shots apologize about the disappointment in my voice that is rather disappointing we need two to wound we don't need to use twin linked we're wounded four times and we kill four more cultists so the chimera is going to fire at the accursed cultists using its multi-laser, flamer, and lasgun array. Before we do that, I'm just going to remind you of the data sheet ability that the Accursed Cultists have, whereby they can make a reactive move into engagement range after shooting is complete. And in doing so, will prevent any of the Adeptus Arbites getting any further into the terminus. So let's start with some shooting. We need fours to hit with the multi laser. We carry on being brilliant at shooting. <laughs> Heavy flamer D6. One shot. Okay, let's see what happens. We need a free to wound. Wounds. Uh, this is AP minus one, so it goes straight to a feel no pain of six up. Saves, no wounds taken. We then have 12 Lasgun shots because 
we're in rapid fire range. So let's see if we can do some damage. We need fours. We hit eight times. We now need fives to wound. We wound once. This is going really well. Six up save. Six up feel no pain. So one of the mutants is dead. But now that unit can make a reactive move straight towards the nearest unit and tag them in combat exactly where they want to be. So they can move, I believe, D6. Let's see how far they can move. Three inches, which will be enough to get them into combat and preventing all the other units from shooting. Having killed one mutant in shooting, the accursed cultists, a howling horde, charge forward and engage these arbites. Now that the accursed cultists have made that reactionary move, it's going to be really difficult for the Eversaur Assassin to reach the Dark Apostle, especially with a mutant screening him. We enter the charge phase. I need to measure how far the charge will be for the Eversaur Assassin into the accursed cultists. He's going to need a seven inch charge. The Eversaur Assassin gets six attacks with his Power Sword and Neuro Gauntlet. I remember when they had separate profiles. Oh well, he needs twos to hit. They're strength five against toughness four. And they are also anti-infantry. So let's see what we need. We've hit all six times and we've done an exploding six, so we get three additional attacks. We now need three or better. We have wounded five times. These cut through the armor of the accursed cultists very easily. So I'm going to roll them separately for their feel no pains. So one of the mutants is dead. Second mutant is dead. Third mutant is dead. Fourth mutant is dead. The wounded torment has hit and wounded the Eversaw Assassin twice, he needs four up saves. Saves one, loses two wounds. He has two left. Dark Apostle Andorov is going to now hit the Eversaw. He has five attacks, normally needs twos to hit, but we need three. Hits four times. Not exploding at all with his Accursed Crozius. He now needs Freeze to wound, wounds twice. These are AP minus one, but that doesn't matter because it's the four up invulnerable. The key thing is they do two damage. The Eversaur Assassin is dead. Does he blow up? No. The Torments are at a minus one to hit, so they need fives and sixes on the dice. They have 13 attacks. So they have hit four times. These are strength four, five times, sorry. Strength four against toughness, three, so they're gonna need threes. So they have wounded four times. I'm gonna use a command reroll, five times. So these are AP minus one. They normally have a three up armor save and a four up invulnerable. Let's see what happens. 
They save all of them. So Ductus then get to attack back. They need four to hit. They hit four times. Average then. They need four to wound. They wound once. These are only one damage each. So D6 feel no pain. The torment is now on one wound. The forces of chaos took significant damage during the first turn, losing a mob of cultists. The other reduced to less than 50%. A unit of noise marines reduced to 20% and the same for the dark commune. However, all is not lost. Some models from the accursed cultists will return. How many of the accursed cultists come back? We get three back. So three mutants return. Fantastic news. Keep the faith in the Pleasure Prince. Battleshock tests will be made at a plus one. The accursed cultists need to make a battle shock test. They can use the Dark Apostle leadership of five. For a plus one, they only need a four and two dice. They are absolutely fine. Dark Commune have a leadership of six. So let's see. They only need five on the dice and they pass. The cultist mob need a six on the dice thanks to the plus one and they manage it. Noise Marines need a five on the dice, and they are fine too. And reinforcements will arrive in this turn in the form of Felgor Ravagers. The Chaos Cult has reluctantly conceded this side of the board due to the sheer number of flamers the battle sisters and the adeptus arbites possess any successful charge would be nullified by overwatch the lone noise marine is going to fire his blastmaster at the inquisitor's retinue he gets his dark pact for sustained hits. He misses with one, but with an exploding sustained hit, is hit six times. We now need twos to wound. We have wounded six times. The retinue needs to make Six saves of six. Five of their number have been destroyed by the lone noise marine. The second unit is going to make a dark pack for sustained hits and does so with a seven. I'm going to start with the noise marine carrying a blast master. I'm going to have it on a varied frequency and I'm firing it at the Imperial Navy breaches. So again, I've missed twice, but I get one back with sustained. These are strength six against toughness three. We need two. I am going to use, no, I'm not. I won't use a command reroll. So I've wounded four times. These are going to be AP minus one. So we need fives on the dice. One survived, three of the navy breaches are dead so far. We then have four noise marines carrying sonic blasters. Unfortunately for them, the unfortunately for the noise marines, the doom siren is out of range. So it's sonic blasters it is. Okay, I need freeze to hit. I take away the misses. I can put one back. The oh, two back. Sorry, it's two sixes there. So we need freeze. We have wounded 
six times. These are AP minus one as well, causing one damage. So we need to make six five up saves. Let's see what happens. Again, only one save was made, killing five more. There are only two left. While it's a formality, it still needs to be rolled. The Legionnaires, with the aspiring warlord, they make it into combat. Yes, that means they get plus two to their charge rolls as a damned unit. Fantastic news. Let's see what they need. Yep, we need a seven, would normally be a nine. They get a seven, plus two, nine inches. They are in combat. That's gonna get their dot picked off. They do, resoundingly so. They now need a, a nine or better on the darts. Got a six, gonna roll it on here. Yes, a 12 inch charge, plus two, 14 inches of charge range. So the Felgor Ravagers making their 14 inch charge straight into the Arbites. Getting as many as I can into base to base contact. Of course, the Felgor Champion and Shaman are right at the front. The bell has been tolled so that Slanesh, their patron god, knows death is upon these custodes. They need to get a seven or more on the dice for their dark pact. They do. So they get plus two to their charge. That means now they only need a seven on the dice. Do they do it? They get a seven, so they just make it into combat. On Hive World, the Adeptus Arbites, enforcers of the Emperor's Law, stand as bastions of order and justice. Among them, a particularly hedonistic faction emerges, indulging in the excesses of power and authority, ultimately corrupting their purpose. These Arbites, once noble and disciplined, begin to embrace the dark allure of chaos, their desire for pleasure and power leading them astray. The transformation is both physical and psychological. The once pristine and orderly uniforms of the Arbites become tattered and adorned with trophies of their conquests, bones and symbols of chaos. Their once disciplined demeanor is replaced by a feral, savage nature and their eyes gleam with a malevolent light. The rigid structure of their society crumbles as they abandon their former ideals, fully embracing the chaos they once fought against. As they evolve into Felgor Ravagers, their weapons and equipment become twisted and corrupted, reflecting their new allegiance. Their armor, now warped and jagged, is marked with the sigils of Chaos Gods, and their batons and shock mauls are replaced with brutal, improvised weapons. Their combat style becomes erratic and unpredictable, driven by a thirst for bloodshed and destruction. The Felgor Ravagers, once the protectors of law and order, now roam the Hive world as agents of chaos, spreading fear and anarchy wherever they tread. Their transformation is a stark reminder of the thin line between order and chaos, and the perilous path of those who succumb to the darker aspects of their nature. The accursed cultists are no longer having to hold the line on their own. The Felgor Ravagers have surrounded the Arbites. It feels like a trap that they will not be able to escape from. With blood-curdling roars, the Felgor Ravagers thundered across the battlefield, a savage horde driven by primal fury. 
Their ragged armor clanked, and their eyes gleamed with bloodlust as they charged the Adeptus Arbites, who braced themselves for the onslaught. The Ravagers moved with terrifying speed, quickly encircling the disciplined Arbites. Despite the Arbites' best efforts to maintain formation, the Ravagers' sheer ferocity broke through. Brutal melee ensued, the Arbites' bolt guns flashing in desperate defiance. Yet the Ravagers were relentless, hacking and slashing with a chaotic fury that could not be contained. The Arbites, despite their valiant stand, were overwhelmed, falling one by one until the Ravagers stood victorious, howling in triumph amidst the carnage, the ground littered with the broken bodies of the defenders. We're going to sacrifice one of the Dark Disciples with malign sacrifice to cause a mortal wound on a two-up. So one of them is dead and a Subductor dies of a mortal wound. We're then going to do a Dark Pact for sustained hits. One, so these here are wounding on threes. The Crozius, because it's strength six, is wounding on twos. Right. See what happens. Let's take away the misses. So the Crozius has wounded five times. The Torments have wounded seven times and the Mutants three times. So we'll do the Mutants first because they're no, of no AP. They're all saved. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve saves at four up. The damage output doesn't matter because they've only got one wound each. So let's see. And they're all AP minus one. So it's the it's equal to their armor save. The invulnerable save is so. I would imagine they would be using their invulnerable save because they would want to put their shield in front of them. Let's see what happens rather than allow their armor to be hit. We need four. Let's see how many die. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Eleven wounds taken. Taken, sorry. Well, there was only nine. That unit is gone. The Inquisitor and his unit of Arbites and Battle Sisters heard the all too familiar cries of human death and misery from this side of the battleboard. And there you have it. The Arbites have been crushed. The Dark Apostle returns to his position of piety, preaching to the faithful. From this overhead perspective, you can see that the Imperial agents in their command phase control the Terminus, despite the slaughter they have heard and witnessed. That means they're going to get a plus one to hit this turn. Inquisitor Erasmus can sense the barrier between reality and the immaterium is breaking down. He knows that demons will be materializing on this battle board in this turn. So it's of vital importance that he and his retinue get into the Terminus, destroy the Dark Apostle and his mutants, and in doing so, create that deep strike denial with his mystics. Inquisitor Erasmus will need to take a battle shock test with his surviving retinue.
No, he isn't. Are the surviving Kazakin battle sharked? No, they are not. Is the surrounded rogue trader battle sharked? No, she isn't. With a six inch advance roll, the Inquisitor and his henchmen will move into the center of the terminus. And in doing so, attempt to create an area in which deep strike is denied within the terminus. Unfortunately, the Inquisitor and his retinue didn't quite get as far as I first thought. That doesn't matter, however, because the area in which they are denying deep strike is being supported by the two chimeras as well as the emulator and the chimera at the bottom of the battle board. With a six inch advance the battle sisters carrying bolters are able to screen the inquisitor from the accursed cultists. Initially I was going to move the arbites to screen the back of the Inquisitor and his retinue. Realising that they have assault weapons, I decided to move them closer to the centre so that they can use their combat shotguns to fire at the traitor Astartes in combat with the lone rogue trader. Yes, there will be a minus one penalty to hit, firing into combat, but if we can chip away maybe one Astarte, that will help maintain our OC in the Terminus. The Battle Sisters with the Flamers have provided the cover needed and have the ability to use Overwatch effectively with their Flamers. There is now in the Terminus 48 OC. The cost of staging in this turn will be a limited amount of shooting. The emulator will move forward to create some deep strike denial as well as burn these heretics. The emulator is going to split fire. It's going to fire its heavy flamers into the cultists and its heavy bolter into the traitor Astartes in combat with the rogue trader at a minus one penalty. So they're going to need fours to hit. We've hit twice, sustained one, so we've hit three times. These are strength five against toughness four, we need threes. We've wounded the traitors three times, the traitor Astartes, sorry. So they need four ups, or they're going to take two damage. This could kill three of them. 2d6 hits with the heavy flamers. So nine shots in total. These are strength six. So we only need to get twos to kill. I think there is no need to roll, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So in total, I have caused six wounds, killing the cultists. The Chimera is surrounded by the Felgal Ravagers. Its multi-laser needs five to hit. So it hits once. It would normally be a four, but it's in combat, so it's a minus one penalty. It needs a three to wound. Wounds, five up save. One of the Felgal Ravagers is dead. It's Heavy Flamer, D6, gets three shots off. Needs freeze to wound, two wounds. These are AP minus one, so two sixes. Another Felgal Ravager is dead. The Kazakin Sergeant firing his plasma pistol at the Felgal Ravagers. Hits on a four or above. Now needs a three. I'm going to use a command reroll. Wounds. These are AP minus two and kills a Felgor Ravager. 
so we have in total seven four up invulnerables. I'm going to roll it. Regardless, let's see. She is dead. On the pink dice, we need threes. On the purple dice, we need two. Wow, let's see what happens. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Saving throws with no AP and four saving throws with AP minus one. Let's start with the four. So three of them are dead so far. And then we have 10 to do. There's only two left. It looks like the Felgor Ravagers will be free to carry on their rampage. Let's see what happens. Yes, five wounds failed, which is average. The Kezakin are dead. So far, the noise moons have been very effective in eliminating the Imperial agents who were here. But you will notice that the Legionnaires have been reduced to their aspiring champion who is only on one wound. Battleshock tests. Is the lone Legionnaire Battleshocked? He isn't. The likelihood is that they will shoot and charge the Arbites. The aspiring warlord will expect these noise marines to provide supporting fire, but with weapons that have only AP minus one, the Arbites will get a cover save, which will make it harder to kill them. And there is an emulator there that could provide overwatch. Very tempting, really, when you consider that the aspiring champion only has one wound. Fearful of breaking out of combat, just in case transport decides to overwatch, they will stay where they are. You will notice that this transport is no longer in combat due to the champion being killed last round. The Felgor Ravagers. In the command phase, the Dark Commune will gain the three models thanks to the Dark Apostles amulet. How many of the accursed commune return to the battle board? Two of their models. And then they have a decision to make what they're going to do. Who are they going to charge? Now that the Kays of Kin are dead, the Felgar Ravagers will charge forward towards the Terminus. Now at full strength, the Dark Commune will move into a position where it cannot fail its charge. The only advantage the sisters may have is that the Dark Commune will not be able to bring to bear all of its models due to the close proximity of the terrain. The Beastmen, the Felgor Ravagers, no longer have the tactical acrimon of Adeptus Arbites to know when to fall back to secure victory. They will fight on until the enemy is dead. Rather than concentrate all the demons on one side of the board, I'm going to separate them so that they can all gain access to the terminus and affect the battle rather than waiting The Wounded Legionnaire and the Aspiring Warlord. 
are going to be supported by this unit of demonettes. Now you will notice that the Keeper of Secrets is staying behind cover. He will stage in a future turn because we do not want the demons to be caught in these choke points. Second unit of demonettes has materialized here, ready to charge into the terminus. They will face the possibility of overwatch from the battle sisters carrying flamers. That's why it's going to be really, really important for the Felgor Ravagers to make their charge first. However, they've already lost two beastmen, making a desperate pact to improve their movement. Will they do so again? In desperate times, the mindless faithful of a chaos cult, traitor Astartes and sentient demons would pray to their patron god for assistance. Narratively, it makes sense that the aspiring champion of the Legionnaires is going to ask for sustained hits and passes. He gets one shot with his plasma pistol and not going to overcharge, it's not needed. Hits once, fails to wound. I'm not going to use the command reroll. The Warlord with his melter gun. Two to hit, hits, gets two shots. That's how it's done. That's why he's an aspiring Warlord and the Legionnaire's only an aspiring champion. Two to hit, fantastic. So two to wound, sorry. That means these will be AP minus four. The Adeptus Arbite armor is increased by one because they're in cover. So they would have a free up save. Still with an AP minus four, that's not going to help them. So two die. Every casualty matters now for the Imperial agents. With the death of two Arbites, they've lost four OC in the Terminus. The Noise Marines are going to continue firing into the Adeptus Arbites. Let's see if they get sustained hits in a desperate pact with their patron god. They do. How many attacks does the, the Blastmaster get with its varied frequency? It gets five attacks. So we are looking for sixes and hitting with the rest. We hit on threes. So we get that hit back putting us back to five and a further hit. Let's hope Slanesh doesn't take away any wounds. He gives with one hand, he takes with the other. Let's see what happens. We need twos, these are shot six. So we have wounded six times. I remember when sixes used to give mortal wounds, not anymore, what a shame. Their armor save of the, cust of the Adeptus Arbites, and they call them custodies, they wish, is four plus normally, they're in cover, so it would be three plus, AP minus one, so back to four. Potentially, we could lose six Adeptus Arbites here, and in losing six, we lose 12 OC. Significant. Crikey. We didn't beat the averages. We've lost eight OC. We now have four noise marines, including the champion, carrying sonic blasters. They get three attacks each. Looking for sixes. Told you. He gives with one hand and he takes with another. <sighs> So we've only managed to hit six times. Shame. 
However, we have wounded five times. These are AP nothing. However, the remaining Adeptus Arbites get plus one to their armor save. Thanks for being in cover. Thanks to being in cover, so they need freeze on the dice. They lose one more. So, from two units shooting at the Adeptus Arbite, they have lost 14 OC. Having lost seven Adeptus Arbite and 14 OC, the only positive I can take from the devastating shooting from the Noise Marines sonic weapons and melter gun of the aspiring warlord is it will be harder for them to charge in this turn. Doesn't feel like a victory though, does it? For the Imperial agents who are slowly losing control of the terminus. We now go into the charge phase. As explained before, the Felgor Ravagers are going to charge the Battle Sisters. The Battle Sisters have got to make a decision whether they hold fire or shoot Overwatch. The Battle Sisters are going to bravely ignore the charge of the Felgor Ravagers who are going to do a dark desperate pact with their patron god, Slanesh. Let's see what happens. Again, they fail it. D3, mortal wounds. They take three mortal wounds, killing three more beastmen. What is their charge? Their charge roll is a six, which is not good enough. The demonettes are going to charge into the terminus. The demonettes need a nine on the dice, but because they've got an instrument of chaos, they get plus one to their dice roll, so need an eight or better to reach the battle sisters. They will be able to run through the ruins of the terminus because they are infantry. Let's see what happens. They do not make it. I have no re-roll to help them, but I do have Overwatch. This could be a significant turning point. There's been two. The Greater Demon failed his charge at the Immolator, meaning the Demonettes are exposed to the piety of the Battle Sisters Flamers. And the second unit of Demonette potentially could lose a significant amount of their number. So D6 Head Flamer hits, five. This is going to burn, burn them, right. These are strength six against toughness three. The AP doesn't matter. The fighting demons after all. Let's see how many I burn. Two to wound. All five are wounded. All five hit by the flames. Five are vulnerable. Four are dead. How many demons are hit by the Minister and Flames? Let's see. Five in total. We need threes to wound. We've wounded them three times. Five ups. One saves. A further two die. We then have rapid firing bolt guns and a combi weapon from the Sister Superior. Need sixes. Only one more hit. Three to wound. Doesn't wound. The Aspiring Lord and 
um, aspiring champion who's on one wound will charge into the remaining Arbite. Traitor starting in the Terminus. With an 18 charge, they will be in. The Dark Apostle is going to sacrifice his remaining Dark Disciple. Let's see what happens. Fails to do so. The Dark Disciple is dead. No mortal wounds are delivered to the Battle Sisters. Only the Torments can get into combat due to the choke point of the terrain. Seven, four ups. See what happens. So we lose four battle sisters. The Paraphys of the Aspiring Champion and Lord. So Aspiring Champion's done better in combat to make up for his poor shooting. So we need to make Six, six ups, because he's at AP minus two. The Adeptus Arbites are dead. The two Beastmen fighting the surviving Arbites. Let's see what happens. No hits with the Great Weapon. Only one with the Stave. This is strength four against Toughness three. Wounds, AP minus one, five up save for the Emperor and saves it. The Lone Arbite with his wooden baton, very black adder. Let's see what happens. Hits twice. Come on, George, you can do it. Needs fives. Wounds once. Can he kill a beast man with a bat on? He can. A lone Arbite fights on in the name of the Emperor. The slow demise of the Felgor Ravagers continues, some of which is self-inflicted. The accursed cultists are being held up by a lone battle sister, warding them off with a holy relic. Lord Inquisitor Erasmus looks on, knowing the end is near. As we enter turn three, our situation appears dire. The Chaos Cult forces, empowered by dark sorceries and sheer brutality, have pushed us to the brink. Attrition has taken a heavy toll, with sonic weaponry, mutations and power fists wreaking havoc among us. The battlefield is strewn with our fallen and hope seems to wane. In this moment of crisis, Inquisitor Erasmus stepped forward as a beacon of resilience. Over the Vox, his voice ringed clear with a resolve that cut through our despair. He issued a rallying cry for one last stand, urging us to concentrate our efforts on eliminating the Chaos Cult's infantry. The dead accept defeat. But we will not be turned by demons, heretics, or traitors. The remaining Imperial agents in the Terminus have a total OC of 24, thanks to the two Chimeras. Sister Superior trusts her battle sisters to burn the Felgor Ravagers and maim them with Bolt of Fire. She's going to use her combi weapon against the Demigod. Despite facing overwhelming odds, Erasmus's message carried a powerful reminder to me and my battle sisters. Even in the face of certain death, the light of the Emperor shines brightest. The forces of chaos may seem unstoppable, but the Imperium's strength lies in its unwavering faith and determination. 
So the immolator is going to split fire. It's heavy bolter and two heavy flamers are going to go into the demonettes. The hunter killer missile at a minus one penalty is going to try and hit the keeper of secrets. Hits or wound on a three. Wounds four up invulnerable. Doesn't D6 damage. Takes six damage. Still no pain. Only takes two wounds. The immolation flamers cause eight possible wounds. These are twin linked, so I'll be able to re-roll any failed wound rolls of two, because they're shown six. Re-roll that one. So eight saves. Hit five up. Two have been saved. We're going to do tank shot. Let's see what happens. He's again saves two thirds of the damage. Let's see if I can do any more damage. So he falls to hit for my armor tracks. I now need fives to wound. I wound once. He will need a four up in rural save and takes an additional wound. Let's see if he saves it. He doesn't this time. He's now on 14 wound. Let's see if Inquisitor Erasmus's stirring words continue to inspire the lone battle sister. They have only wounded once. The battle sister has a chance to survive. Let's see what happens. She needs a five on the board and gets it. Oh my goodness me, this is worrying. You had your chance, George. You had your chance. He now needs twos to wound. Wounds once. These are AP, I believe, minus one, I think. Let's see. AP minus one. So on a five up, he will save. You've just seen the battle sister do it. It's now your time, George. No cutting plan required, just a five. Let's go for it. No. He is dead. We enter the command phase for the Chaos Cultists in turn three. They do not control the Terminus. Inquisitor Erasmus has 20 OC points, whereas the Accursed Cultists and the Warlord only have a total of seven. We're going to need to take a battle shock test for the demonette. Battle shock test for the demonette. They got a four, plus one, a five. They've failed their check. They are OC nothing for this turn. However, they will move forward and hide because they're eventually they will be OC6. D3 models come back thanks to the amulet. So two mutants return. That's going to increase OC. And then enter the movement phase to move the unit of noise marines from the platform and bring forward the lone noise marine who damaged the Inquisitor's retinue in turn one. The Keeper of Secrets, unfortunately, is stuck 
there and will not be able to use its 5OC to influence the battle in this turn. The lone noise marine is going to make a desperate pack with his patron god and passes it, he's going to have sustained hits. He's going to use the single frequency profile. He has moved forward and will hit on fours. He hits once, gets a sustained one, now hits three times. These are strength nine, so need two. Wounds two times. Would have been a mortal wound back in the day. But let's roll that again. So he's wounded three times. These are AP minus two. So the they're not gonna get a cover save. Because they're in power armor. So they need fives. Two saved. One of the sisters dies. The demonettes aren't going to hide. They're going to charge into the Inquisitor and his retinue. They do so with a resounding 12, thanks to having a chaos instrument. Three. So in total, they have caused four wounds at AP minus one and one devastating. We need sixes. There are only three of the retinue left. I thought there were more. Let's see what happens. So, one acolyte is dead. A second acolyte is dead, which is one of the servitors. And one of the gun servitors is on one wound left. Crikey. Oh my goodness me. Slanesh, you've punished me for being overconfident. Crikey. Oh. Two attacks. Hit. We now need threes to wound. Well, we wound twice. We need a double five to save. Let's see what happens. Complete and utter opposite. The Inquisitor. One attack's going into the Demonette. The other three into the Aspiring Chaos Lord. Me too. So we hit. We now need freeze to wound. We wound twice here. I haven't used my command reroll. So we've now wounded three times. These are AP minus two against the Warlord. So the Warlord will use these here and the five up in vulnerable for the Demonette. Well, the Demonette is dead. The five up in vulnerable, four up in vulnerable, sorry, saves the Lord once, but he fails too. He's on three wounds left. These are D3. Let's see what happens. First one. He's on one wound. Doesn't matter now, but I'll roll it anyway. He takes four wounds and dies. These will be enough to blow up the tank. It doesn't. One saves. One goes through, causing three damage. Having survived the beginning of the end, Erasmus orders the elimination of the noise marines. He knows he won't survive to see it. The noise marines must be stopped at all costs from overwhelming the terminus with sonic energy. With limited maneuverability and no line of sight, the chimeras will eliminate the remaining beastmen and shoot into combat to try and support Erasmus. The Chimera will follow the same path as the Immolator, 
to draw line of sight at the noise marines. The immolator will fire out of combat into the noise marines. A heavy minister of flamer. How many times does it hit? Six. It now needs to wound on threes. It wounds five times. These are AP minus one. Five four ups for the lone noise marine. The noise marine is dead. Need fives with the eight shots on the two multi lasers. It's not bad. Four of them wounding on a four. So four wounds to save. These are AP nothing, so four six ups. Four mutants die. Four feel no pain. Dead. The emulators heavy flavors at the noise marines. Nine shots. Okay, so we hit nine times. But are they hurt by the flames? Well, let's see. These are twin linked. So strength six against toughness four. We're going to get... We're going to need to get threes on the dice, but we'll reroll. So we need to reroll these three. It's not bad going at all. So in total, we've wounded seven times. These are AP minus one. It only caused one damage, however. So in total, one noise marine dies, two noise marines die. The heavy bolter will need fives to hit. Sixes will be exploding. A heavy bolter will need fives to hit. Hits twice. So it hits three times because it's an exploding six. Thanks to the sustained hit, we have the potential of wounding three times. We only wound twice, that's good enough. AP minus one, two damage, fourth needed. So one survives, one dies. That's three dead so far. These are strength four against toughness three. Three's needed. At a minus one. So four's needed because of the acolyte rule. So four have gone through. Servitor needs a six to save, fails and is dead. We now need three five ups. Save the first one. The Inquisitor is dead. Pink ones are the claws. Purple ones are the sword. Need twos. Hit. With everything. Hooray! Need fives. Wound three times, one of which is devastating. Dropping the tank to two wounds. I have to save these two. These are AP minus two. Need fives. Does the tank explode? Terminus is still being held by this lone unit, of Battle Sisters, with supporting fire from the Chimera transport. We enter the command phase of the Chaos Cult, and they are still not in control of the Terminus. If the two surviving Noise Marines pass their Battleshock test and the Keeper of Secrets gets a good advance, then there is a possibility that they will take control of the battle for the first time. The big question is whether the Dark Apostle is brave enough to move towards the remaining four battle sisters and face overwatch before charging them. Dark Apostle Andorov has the opportunity to clear his church of worshippers of the false emperor by moving in this direction. For the first time in the battle, 
The Chaos Cultists control the Terminus. The Battle Sisters will have an opportunity to overwatch, to try and reduce the number of accursed cultists. The Dark Apostle is intent on destroying these worshippers of the False Emperor. As soon as the Battle Sisters open fire, the Accursed Cultists will be able to move D6 inches forward and attack them. This isn't going to end well. What a fitting end for these Battle Sisters. Burning, heretics, mutants and traitors. How many hits do we get with the Ministorm Flamer? Six hits. Will the light of the Emperor continue to shine on them? Freeze to wound. Not bad at all. At AP minus one, the attacks from the Ministorum Heavy Flamer cannot be saved. The two mutants who return die, as well as one of the torments. Let's move on to the Ministorum Flamer. Will the Holy Light of the Emperor shine on her. Four hits, I think that's not bad at all. Strength five against toughness four. These will go into the torments now. We need freeze. These are AP nothing. So how many sixes can we save? None. The second torment is dead. Again, for my vantage point, we can move them two inches forward. Placing them within an inch. They are now in combat. With nothing else to resolve, let's see if the Dark Apostle can expel these abominations from his church. Before combat begins, as he moves forward, he makes a desperate pact with his lord and fails it. Fucking hell. How many wounds? It will kill the torment. The torment is dead. I know Slanesh takes pleasure in pain, but how perverse is that? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Trying to ignore the lack of faith shown by Slanesh in him. He's now going to try and hit these battle sisters needing two hits. He's missed twice. The implication of that means he cannot kill all the battle sisters. He now needs tubes to wound. He has wounded them three times. For dramatic effect, I will roll these individually. The first battle sister dies. The second battle sister survives. The third battle sister survives. I'm going to remove the battle sister who lost her life in that combat. Doesn't matter anymore who I take. It's now time to see if the sisters can hit the Dark Apostle back. The OC is currently eight each at the end of turn four. Let's see what happens. We have three attacks with the chainsword, needing fours to hit. We also have two attacks from the battle sisters. We hit 
four times. Stunning hitting really for a battle sister. In the name of the Emperor, take revenge for the destruction of Hive World. The Emperor protects. Crikey. Four hits. Let's see what happens. I would be in a state of fear right now. Slarmesh has abandoned you. The Dark Apostle has one wound left. With one wound left, this is a fight to the death. Dark Apostle gets five attacks. He dare not ask for help from his patron god. He has to prove his worth. He has failed to hit twice, summoning his remaining energy. He must somehow try to win this fight relying on the physiology given to him by the corpse god. He wounds once. Can the battle sister survive and deliver the emperor's justice? She does. Slarnash is probably enjoying the pain felt by the dark apostle. Let's see what happens. Pause to hit. We hit three times. We need fours to wound. We wound once. Save must be made. And he fails. The Dark Apostle has been murdered by the surviving battle sisters, giving them control of the terminus for the time needed to escape Hive World and retell this story to her battle sisters. Mortally wounded, the Dark Apostle falls to the ground in ecstasy, knowing Slarmesh took pleasure in his death.